The Untold Truth of the Parents of Alaskan Bush People For seven seasons, the Discovery Channel has captivated audiences with Alaskan Bush People, the reality show starring the Brown family and their quest to live off the grid in a supposedly desolate part of Alaska. Billy and Ami Brown claimed to have brought up their seven children by living off the land for several decades, though since the show has gained popularity, so has the scrutiny of the family's so-called Bush living. As of this writing, the latest season ended with Yami battling grave health issues, and the family moving to Colorado, so that they can still indulge their rural fantasy while staying closer to a hospital. While the Browns' future certainly seems up in the air, much has been revealed of their past, especially when it comes to the patriarch and matriarch of this wild crew. This is the untold truth of the Lee and Ami Brown. The Lee grew up wealthy. According to Capital City Weekly, the Lee Ryan Brown had a nice life in North Richland Hills, Texas. He was given lavish gifts including a new ski boat at 14, a new Camaro at 15, and the family Cessna 172 a small airplane at 16. But his whole life changed in 1969, when at the age of 16, he also lost his entire family, his mother, father, and only sister, in a plane crash. According to Belize two memoirs, one wave at a time and the lost years. Yes, he's an author as well as a bushman, but more on that in a second. He became a ward of the state, and was somehow duped out of any inheritance by scheming judges and lawyers. It's all pretty murky, as is much with the backstory of the Browns. At any rate, this is where the Lee's wanderlust kicked in. Broke and homeless, he crisscrossed America over the next ten plus years, according to Capital City Weekly, at some point meeting Ami and at another point, ending up with her and their two young sons in Alaska, and having to be rescued after getting stranded for 18 months on Mossman Island. Somehow, this experience led Billy and Ami to realize that the Alaskan wilderness is where they were meant to be, and the rest is reality TV history. Billy is a successful author. Let's back up to Billy's writing career for a second. Apparently while Billy and Ami were busy populating the Alaskan backcountry with their own rapidly growing brood, Billy found plenty of time in front of a typewriter or a bicycle-powered laptop, perhaps, to pen not only the aforementioned memoirs, but also a bunch of books for his kids. Or so he claims. At a panel for the Television Critics Association Winter Press Tour via Channel Guide magazine Billy credited these children's books for his entire writing career. I have written children's books for my kids and stuff and a book about my life, one wave at a time, and our guys went in when you go to the harbor shacks and stuff, we get internet every once in a while, and our guys went in, and especially, and he put a website for the kids books. And through that, a guy got in touch with us, and we ended up here. As of this writing, it's impossible to find either those children's books or the website supposedly created by Joshua Bimbam Brown. The family's current website makes no mention of the children's books, and on the Lee's Amazon author page, only one other title is credited, the fantasy book called Teacher of the Old Code which was released on paperback in 2009. On top of that, Capital City Weekly reported that it was actually a nationwide book campaign for one wave at a time, backed by two publishers, that led to film rights being optioned, as well as a possible for part mini series for television which ostensibly became Alaskan Bush people. So, it would seem the least stunning media strategy, not a stroke of luck and a scrappy website, is what launched this family's fame. Ami has a strained relationship with her family. Ami's family estrangement has manifested itself a few times on the show, but also in a bizarre incident in which her mother, Erling Branson, attempted to travel to Alaska to surprise Ami. According to Juno Empire, after 37 years of estrangement, Early made the 3,500-mile trip without confirmation from the Browns only to find that they were vacationing in Malibu at the time. In what is probably the saddest sentence ever spoken, the 83-year-old Branson said of her daughter, I want to hug her neck and see my grandchildren. I just want to see her before I die. The whole thing was oddly planned and publicized by Earlene's great-nephew, Chuck Gilbert, who even posted videos of the journey to a YouTube page called Memon Trip to Alaska. For some reason, the page still exists, although all of the content has been deleted. So what was Ami's response to all of this? She accused her relatives of exploitation, and said that her father's alcoholism tore our family apart. She added, 
Watching these things as a child, you learn from it. That is the reason why I don't let them know where, physically, I am. For their part, Omni's alienated kinfolk have accused the lead of being extremely controlling and effectively brainwashing Omni against them. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Branson V. Brown, Omni's mom and brother have thrown lots of shade. A morally Branson grew up outside of Fort Worth, Texas. She was the youngest of three siblings, according to her mother and brother, Early and Let Branson, who spoke to Radar Online in an apparent attempt to refute some allegations made in Belize autobiographies. Let claims Ami had a good childhood, and Earlene says she was spoiled rotten, which is a stark contrast to Belize's apparent claim that Ami grew up dirt poor. Let and Earlene also contradicted Ami's claims of growing up in a home filled with violence, although they acknowledged that her parents' divorce brought her some pain. Additionally, Let and Earlene claimed that Belize lied about his age when he convinced the Bransons to let him marry Ami when she was just 15 years old. Belize was allegedly 26 at the time and had done plumbing work for early when he met and fell in love with Ami. Belize gave the impression that he was very wealthy and came from a wealthy family. He seduced us with the trappings of wealth, Let told Radar, adding, We thought that he would provide for Ami, that he would keep her in school, and never keep her from seeing us. And we never saw her again. Yish, and here we thought escaping to a frigid Alaskan forest would be a surefire way to escape family drama. Believe Secret Kid wasn't a secret at all. One of the big plot points in Season 5 was Believe being reunited with a supposed long-lost daughter from a previous marriage. He cryptically hinted at the failed marriage in the lost years, writing, For those years of my life there's not much I want to say, before describing his ex-wife as mentor for her years, and having told him that she never loved me and in less than a year she found she didn't even like me. Presumably, it was from this marriage that Billy had two daughters, of whom he has been estranged for decades. The show took full advantage of this storyline and even flew to Willow Byers, one of Billy's daughters, up to Brown Town, the family's ramshackle woodland homestead, for what was portrayed as a reunion of sorts. Except according to Channel Guide magazine, it was quickly revealed that not only had the family known about Twilla for quite some time, there's also evidence on social media that Willow and Belie have been in contact over the years. Wait, does this mean we're trying to say something on reality TV was fake? We know, not exactly a shock. But Shady Secret Daughters isn't where the fraudulent activity ends for the Browns. Belie and Joshua got busted defrauding the state of Alaska. In January 2016, Belie and second oldest son, Joshua, plead guilty to falsifying information on their applications for the Alaska Permanent Fund Dividend or PFD, according to Juno Empire. The PFD is an annual dividend that is paid to Alaska residents from investment earnings of mineral royalties. To qualify, you have to have lived in Alaska for one entire year, as well as intend to remain an Alaska resident indefinitely at the time of your application, though you are allowed to live out of state for varying reasons and for up to 180 days. Though they claim to have lived in the Alaskan wilderness for decades, it was revealed that Billy and Joshua previously signed written statements admitting they left the state in October 2009 and didn't return until August 2012, but continued to collect PFD funds through that time. In fact, the grand jury investigation led to charges for six out of the nine Brown family members related to the case, but those additional charges were dropped in exchange for Billy and Joshua's plea deal. In total, the family swindled the state out of $20,938 in PFD money. As part of the plea deal, Billy and Joshua were sentenced to 30 days in jail followed by community service, ordered to pay back the money as well as additional fines, and rendered ineligible for further PFD funds. Both men wound up serving their time via house rest, rather than in the actual slammer, but the whole incident served to highlight two things. One. The Browns have almost certainly never lived entirely off the land. 2. For at least three years, they couldn't even stand to live in the state they claim to lie so barely for even half the year. Belie has told conflicting tales about their original Alaska cabin burning down. As it stands, Belie has now given three different accounts of how the family lost their original, hand-built bush cabin. According to the show's synopsis on the Discovery Channel's website, the cabin where they lived for years was seized and burned to the ground for being in the wrong location on public land, 
which is an accusation that heavily implies that a government agency destroyed the family's home. But according to Radar Online, the lead wrote in one wave at a time that the fire was accidental. And in yet another variation of the story, according to Channel Guide magazine, when talking about the fire during a segment on the show, the lead walked the whole thing back to, my cabin burned and I wasn't home. That's all I can say. So, does he actually fear retribution from the alleged arsonist government agents, or was the whole thing a bit of extra drama cooked up to amplify the perceived trauma of their situation? Ami's is battling lung cancer. As of this writing, the Brown family is in the midst of Ami's ongoing fight with lung cancer. As chronicled on the show, her treatment has brought them out of the bush and into Southern California, then Colorado, so that she can receive the best care possible. In an exclusive August 2017 interview with People, the lead revealed that Ami's prognosis is not good. It's cancer. And there's no primary but we're gonna call it lung cancer, the lead says the doctors told them, adding, at least 3D. It's in both lungs, in the middle and sides of the lungs. He also said that Ami was given as low as a 3% chance of living in a separate interview during which Ami also expressed her thoughts. She revealed that her dental issues, which were also captured on the show, led to the discovery of a little capsule, which eventually led to the cancer diagnosis. She also said that the reason she wanted to keep doing the show as well as make her treatment public was to help people who may be going through a similar battle, and to take away a lot of their fear about what treatment entails. I realized early into this that it's very easy to want to give up and just die. And on the pessimist side, it could be my last days. But I have the will to fight, Ami told people. The Lees had health problems as well. Before Ami's fight for her life became a plot point, the show also documented the Lees struggled with some kind of vague seizure disorder, which in an echo of Ami's current situation, also forced the family into the lower 48 while he recovered. Speaking exclusively with Radar Online, and in typically vague belief fashion, the Brown family patriarch said, the seizures have been going on since my coma, and what happened is they started progressing and lasting a lot longer, getting harder. Supposedly, doctors could never track the cause of the eight-day coma, which also left him with a host of other issues. Everything shut down, my kidneys, my lungs. My brain swelled to like 75%. They literally thought that I would be childlike if I did wake up. It was really bad thing that we'd been fighting for almost 10 years now, the Lee said. Outside of another unspecified kidney problem, which the Lee describes as one of those things that you might not want to go to doctors because they find out stuff, he seems to be doing fine now if the show is any indication. Thought the backstory of these nature-loving folks is a bit dubious, it's undeniable that they both love their children dearly and are now dealing with a terrible situation that we wouldn't wish on anyone. Hopefully Ami pulls through, and this lovable, if slightly questionable wilderness family can go on to many more adventures.